I'm not gonna lie. I was gonna lie to you about which tablet's the best, but then after reviewing all the tablets, I realized that it was actually, in fact, the best tablet out of all of them. I'm not gonna lie. The fact is, the product that I'm about to review is so good that I don't have to lie about it. All right. $15 to $4,000 worth of uh, Wacom equipment here. We're going to be re reviewing and uh, making a tier list. Ethan Becker going all the way down to ZHC. <laughs> all right, we're going to be going over the feel, the price, and the quality. But I got to say, while reviewing these tablets, I discovered the sad truth about the $4,000. The biggest, the largest, most expensive tablet in the world. I'm pretty disappointed, but we'll get to that. Come on, let's go. Come on. Cintiq Pro, 13 inch, $589. All right, and for this to actually work, you do need a bigger Wacom to set it on. All right, in the end, pretty hashtag cool, but guess what? Too many flipping wires for me. Look, this sucker's got one wire, three wires, four wires. All right, feels good, quality's good, but too much hashtag money and uh, too many flipping cables. What if I want to go to Grandma's house? All right, this one's a little too complicated to bring to Grandma's house, so I'm uh, putting it under Ross Tran. Lots of cables, pretty expensive. All right, for all those of you who don't want to get a flipping tablet, you know, like a screen tablet, you can get one of these suckers. Intuos Pro, 379. My good reviewer, I feel like I'm reviewing these like super well. Oh man, this is actually really smooth. It's kind of difficult to get the, the hang of it first, the hand-eye coordination, but... Oh, wow. It's kind of weird, but I feel like I have a lot of control with this. This is really weird. I don't like liking this so much. gum. I actually really, uh, I really like this. One of the main reasons I like it, I'm finding, is that this feels like paper. This is, uh, this is kind of more difficult to draw and it's not so slick. But that's just a personal preference. It's cool, but for, honestly, it's way too expensive compared to the other stuff that we're going to be reviewing later. I mean, you can take this sucker to grandma's house. It's got one flipping cable, but honestly the kids these days were using uh, screens, tablet screens to draw on. So if you're looking to make a little hobby out of it, this is cool. This is really cool. Kind of pricey again, but we're going to be going pro with the screens. Yeah, this sucker feels pretty good, but 397, give me a break. This sucker's going under Proco. You know what I'm saying? Cintiq 22 HD, 1200 bucks. All right, you guys know what it is. I use this one in all my videos. This is pretty much, I've always used uh, the 22. Can't go wrong with this one, essentially. This one, this one's me. This is, a, this is where home is at for me. It's light, it's flipping light. You can stick the sucker on an arm and it, you can just flop it around every which way. The older version did have a bunch of buttons over here, which I like to click a button to switch to my other monitor, but this one doesn't have it. Pretty hashtag sad. It is light, but another downside is that Fire Eagle can't fly with this one. You know, Fire Eagle can't fly to, to Grandma's house. Fire Eagle can't leave the nest. And also it's a whole foul foul. It's kind of pricey. If you're professional, you can't go wrong with this one. Because I love this sucker so much, I'm going to stick it right up here uh, in my tier. Hey, want to see something cool? Look at that. One flipping cable. Not only is it one flipping cable, but this sucker does not even need to plug up to a flipping wall. This thing plugs up to your darn computer and draws the power that way. Sucker literally took me seconds to plug in. I'm not gonna lie to you, I actually already use this sucker on a lot of other projects. I tested it on storyboards, I tested it on character designs, all kinds of stuff. I had to do professional work in a pinch and it's definitely held up, J no problem. Just like any, just like this, st the standard one that I use all the time. This sucker's just big enough to see what's what and just small enough to go visit grandma. Also, this sucker can plug up to your god dang phone. This is one of the newest products from Whack'em and it's like, it's pretty flipping good. Uh, we're gonna put this sucker right up here. Ethan Becker tier. Jazz is not looking pretty good right there. Let's, uh, let's see. I got my first Wacom, Wacom Bamboo Fun uh, at the age of 13. All right, I'm gonna see if it holds up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no. Bamboo Fun. Is it fun? Final result. Yes. But that's, that's about it. Not only can you not buy this anymore, but you shouldn't. Boom! What time is it? It's mystery tablet time. It's pencil. It's pencil and paper. All right, that's the gag. Is it funny? Look, age old pencil and paper. 
Honestly, it all came down to this one question for me. What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? That's what it came down to for me whenever I was using digital with screens and stuff and tablets. It's because within a stroke, within digital, you can make that stroke without caring whether or not you fail. But with this, for me, I was very timid and hesitant to make these lines. Is it a good place to start? Absolutely. You can also build confidence with like drawing with a pen or something. But my point is there's a specific type of confidence that I built when I used, started using digital. All right, that's the way it was for me. All right, finally, we're gonna be re re reviewing this flipping 32 inch Cintiq. Let me show you. This Cintiq is, is huge. Look at this sucker. I can't, uh, I don't know if you can see how big it is, but it's, it's massive. It's bigger than my widescreen. There's my widescreen. It's flipping bigger than that sucker. All right, I'm not gonna lie to you. I never have, never will. Uh, the quality's good. Nobody's questioning that. The quality's always flipping good. Even better than the quality that I use on my 22. The price is insane, obviously, but that's understandable. This sucker right here is $3,300. But coupled with the arm that they sent me, the whole thing comes out to about $4,000. I'm an arm guy, okay? So I consider that the whole setup. I need that setup. But the problem is, but the problem is, this is the sad, sad truth about the Quackum and the Cintiqs. This one in particular. <clears throat> this is too flippin' big. That's what's, honestly, that's what makes me sad. I wanna use this sucker every day, but I can't because it's too big. And I thought, you know what, it's okay because I got the arm, right? I can set up the arm on my table, and then I can have this sucker swinging around. And whenever I don't want it in my way, I can just flip it up and move it out of my way. Well, guess what? I tried that. But the, the thing is so flippin' heavy. At first, it was literally bending my table. And then I created this thing. All right, that's me slicing some wood to, to make it fit onto my desk. Here, check it out. It's so flipping big that it was actually pulling the, 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 the glue off of the, the base of this thing. But I gotta say that this is all user error. This isn't, this has nothing to do with Quackum. This is me being stupid and trying to like make it work with a bad rig. So the thing is, if you wanna get this sucker, you have to have like a professional desk set up if you want to use the arm. The thing is meant to handle this weight, and actually the setup, the arm setup is really good compared to other arm setups. Let me show you the arm setup. All right, so typically with Cintiqs and arm setups, you gotta like hold up the Cintiq and then drill in the uh, the back of the arm plate to the back of the Cintiq, and somehow you're supposed to do this while you're holding up the Cintiq, or you have to like get a friend to hold it up or get your grandma to hold up the darn thing, or you drill in the plate for the back. But for this sucker with this arm, and it's a really good idea, they have you drill it into the back of the sucker. After that, you got your arm just sitting there chilling, and you just flip and slide that sucker right on there. It's good to go. You don't need anybody's help to do it, really. Actually, I like this sucker so much that I'm going to stick it up here with Jazza. I feel like Jazza really deserves it. It's really top tier. It's just way too big for me. It's for pros. All right, y'all. Final conclusion. I honestly wanted this sucker to win. I wanted the 30 or the, the flipping 32, whatever it is, the big one. I wanted this one to win, but it's just too flipping big. It's the sad truth about Whackum. This product is just too good. It's too professional for me. If you're a pro, if you got a big old desk, get this sucker. But everything considered, when we're talking price, when we're talking size, going to grandma's house, hands down, I got it's got to be the Whackum one. I was gonna lie and say that the Whackum one was my top choice, but it, it ended up being my actual top choice. Finally, we got a, a Quakem One reference challenge winner. If you guys know, you take four of your favorite artists and you're going to draw or paint within their styles. There's a lot of good ones. A winner has been chosen, but I just wanted to kind of highlight some of the good ones. All right, take a look at Paul Marka Pachuca, flipping awesome. All right, the reason I like this is because of the hustle of this kid. There's a bunch of different ones. This person didn't only do one, they did multiple. And that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of hustle, is the kind of work ethic that I'm looking for. This person went out of their way and went the extra mile. That's awesome. All right, another cool one is Soy de Milton. Pretty hashtag cool. I'd be lying if I said I didn't like the uh, gorilla's take on Ethan Becker. Clervin Calve, pretty darn cool. I really like this Ryan Lang one. Uh, Ryan Lang's a really good person to learn how to be subtle with your painting skills. Actually, all of them are good. Corey Loftus, uh, Helen Chin. All right, good stuff. Kasari Sart, pretty darn good. Really good, really good textures in these. All right, and for the winner, it's Claire Knight. Thank you, Claire Knight. One last quick announcement, Lightbox, Lightbox Expo is coming up in a flippin' month from now. This time next month, I'm gonna be doing portfolio reviews 
You don't even have to have a portfolio. You can just have, you can send in, you can send in a drawing. You can send in anything that you want to have reviewed. I'm going to do a live stream September 11, 12, and 13. If you know this channel, if you know my Discord, whenever I live stream, you can come in and chat with me. It's going to be like that. We're going to be able to chat, me and you, and everybody can see your work and they can see, you know, like the notes that I put on the work. Lightbox is kind of like Comic-Con, specifically for artists. This year, though, we got a secret special way of doing Lightbox. Secret merch, secret flipping prints, and like I said, for those three days, I'm going to be able to talk to you guys and review portfolios. This going to be a good time. It's going to be great. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, review of all these products, and if you did, you go buy a Quakem 1. I'm not going to review any, any tablets ever again.